attacks into Syria, clearly in response to these Iranian proxies going after our military installations, 10 of them in Iraq, four of them in Syria, wounding 21 plus military members, some of those uh, members, you know, experiencing temporary uh, brain injuries. What do you think of what happened tonight? Yeah, Trace, great to be with you. You know, I, I haven't spent a lot of time in this region. Uh, the Iranian uh, proxies in uh, the Shia militia groups in Iraq, uh, those in Syria, Hezbollah, Hamas, they all want to attack and, and harm U.S. interests and U.S. personnel. They did so a week ago. The president, I think, rightfully uh, responded uh, in, in kind. Uh, the question is, uh, what did we disrupt? What did we attack? Uh, did we disrupt their capability to continue uh, to attack our personnel? In the region, Iran is behind this. The administration has been very slow to acknowledge that uh, Iran is behind this. Mm -hmm. I think today with uh, Kirby's uh, press conference and, and other comments made by the administration, they're, they're coming to the realization that they can't have it both ways by appeasing Iran and uh, helping Israel defend itself and protecting U.S. soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines in the Middle East. So I think this was a necessary step it is part and, and you're right it's going to be conflated with uh you know the average uh, uh joe lunch pail in the middle east there is going to say well this is the united states coming in to help israel uh because it does have that sort of uh tangential effect of separating of forces from uh being able to attack into uh, uh the northern the golan uh, in israel yeah, and, and General, I want to kind of pick up on something you said early in your statement there. You were saying that we don't know what they've hit. We don't know exactly what the targets were. And my question would be, does it matter? Is it the targets they're going after, or is this just a statement coming from the United States? What's your well, I, yeah, Trace, I think it does matter. I think, you know, uh, the Shia militia groups that have attacked our troops we want to degrade, first and foremost, the responsibility is to protect our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, and our bases and our property uh, in that area. And so we want to do that. We want to disrupt their capability. Uh, we want to do more than just make a statement. We want to uh, deny them the right, uh, the ability to uh, get in there and, and harm our people and disrupt our ability to conduct our operations in the Middle East. So that's first and foremost. Now, I, I'm assuming that these were well-designated uh, uh, targets, uh, well-placed targets, and that we had some effect. I mean, you know, our, our Air Force, Navy, uh, et cetera, are very good at doing this kind of thing when they fly and, and, and target our targeting cells are very good and, you know, very proud of the men and women that have conducted these, uh, uh, this, these operations. I wonder, sir, if you look at some of these reports, I was reading reports today where you have, you know, members of Hamas that are actually in Russia. You have the Iranian foreign minister in Russia. Right. If, there's, if there's an interest on your end as to why these people are in Russia, as to what role that Russia wants to play, is there this feeling that Russia wants to be the mediator in some of this, that Russia wants to get a bigger platform in some of this going Going on in the Middle East. What's your thought on that, sir? Yeah, Trace, I, I, I don't think Russia wants to mediate. I think they want to help drive uh, the United States uh, out of the Middle East. I think they want to inflict pain on the United States and Israel by extension. Uh, the, the This is all about Iran's influence. Iran is providing drones and other munitions to Russia. There's an alliance. Uh, what this administration has allowed to happen is this uh, alliance between China, Iran, and, and Russia, and even North Korea, less of a factor here, to ossify and, and come into a, a very crystal clear existence where uh, they are supporting one another. And so Russia's best interests, their self-interests, are, are best served by the United States taking a, getting a black eye here. And, and so they're going to uh, they're gonna do whatever they can to help that happen because yeah, you know, we are doing that to them in Ukraine. And so this is geopolitics yeah. and real politic at its finest. And as you look at the military chessboard here, sir, I'm just wondering if the United States is clearly trying to, to make a statement saying, look, this, this is a one-off. Now stop it. Stop the proxy. Stop going after our military installations. What if it doesn't stop? What if 
uh, you have these groups going back after our militaries, maybe even more robust, then what, sir? Do we respond again with another attack? It, it's, it just seems like yeah. we're, we're now kind of on a bad path. No, wait, wait, we are on a bad path. And that bad path started in Afghanistan two, two and a half years ago or so. And uh, the weakness that has been demonstrated has resulted in uh, you know Iran and others flexing their muscle and taking advantage of the vacuum. And so where we are today is that we've got to really confront uh, the, the dilemma that we are in. Uh, we have really two dilemmas here. We have our interests in the Middle East, which include Israel, and then Israel's uh, the attack on Israel by Hamas. They're really two separate problems, but they will be conflated. And the real issue is, as we, if we push on Iran uh, and uh, you know Russia then and China then perhaps get involved, and now we're talking not just Israel, Hamas, Gaza, we're talking regional, perhaps global conflict with multiple yeah. nuclear nations involved. And I'm wondering, generals, the last question here, you know, if these proxy groups in Syria or in Lebanon or wherever respond, is it, is, is it one of those things that you can tolerate it for a little bit? What happens if Iran in some capacity responds? Does that change the equation here in your estimation? Well, I think Iran has uh, been covertly involved. You know, they trained Hamas before the uh, 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 Hamas invasion of Israel. Uh, they have right. supplied all the weapons. We know this. We know this. So it's it's overt involvement already from Iran, and and so that uh, what step they would take beyond what they've already done, uh, I think, would just be sort of insult to injury. And and we have enough justification cause means to act right now against Iran. And it's just a, a matter of calculus of uh, what what steps do we take? What are those hair triggers that we might, uh, you know, branches and sequels? If we do this, what happens? What does the enemy choose to do? Because the enemy always gets a vote. Yeah. Uh, General, if you'd stand by for us for a few minutes, we would greatly appreciate it, sir. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey,